It is Thursday the 5th of September. I'm your host Ryan Keir and this is the Quantum Cast. In light of the B word, today we're going to be looking at the F word, Future PLC, <laughs> alongside two other stocks, one being Enquest and the other being Dixon's Carphone PLC. All right, so beginning with Future Group, the company has actually had a positive update. They've shown that trading for the final quarter of the current year in the core operations of the group is stronger than the board's previous expectations, otherwise known as a profit upgrade, I assume. Their full year EBITDA is now expected to be materially ahead of the current board expectations. What a positive thing to see. Materially ahead signals that this could be a bit of a shocker, on the positive side at least. Something to see for long-term shareholders. This company doesn't really have a large net short position. If we're talking about disclosable shorts above 0.5%, we have Marshall Wallace there short at about half a percent. Nothing too serious. The company's also had the integration of Perch, increasing their reach in the US market, and they expect to publish their full year results for the year ended the 30th of September 2019 on the 15th of November 2019. A decent lag in regards to the reporting. Usually you see around three months, so decent accounting processes over here. I think that's probably just going to be taken well by shareholders. The company has had quite a rough past few months. They have recovered from their lows, yet uh, they, they were trading with quite a bit of volatility. In fact, if we look back over the past six months, the shares crashed from around £12 to £9, went up to £11, crashed to £9.50, and they're back up to that starting level, near highs. So I assume quite a bit of this stuff uh, mentioned in today's RNS is probably going to be priced in. They've got a market cap of around a billion and their price to earnings ratio is relatively high. Google suggests that it's in the hundreds, but we have to wait and see how the report goes, how the actual profits are. Because if the company's been making a couple of million, because I believe their net income for I think 2018 or so was 2.9 million pounds. If we're talking around there, materially above it could be double it, which would still be insufficient if we're talking about fair valuation. But anyways, the company's made 52-week highs at £12.50 per share and 52-week lows at £3.67. So it's had a decent year to say the least. We're talking from lows, more than 200% has been returned to shareholders who at least got in there and those who got in along the way have also made a decent amount of money. But that's really it for that RNS. If we have a brief scan one more time. Yeah, just, just integration into different markets is one target they're trying to go for. They have a substantial presence in the US, so they're trying to get their cells out there so that they can be known across the world. A little bit of uh, international marketing, I see. Okay, now moving on to Enquist Group. What a report. I can see that the company has made material net debt reduction. But before we get there, we're going to have a look at production figures and work our way down. So the group net production is up 27%, averaging around 68,500 barrels of oil per day. This is obviously following an increased acquisition of, I think it was, Either Magnus, I think it was Magnus or Kraken, one of the assets these guys hold. They decided to have a rights issue a good while back, I think maybe a year back or so, to try and raise as uh, money to acquire assets. And these assets, they believed, could up their production, which they obviously did, and that contributed further to material net reduction for the company. And that debt reduction will increase their value because once you pay off your debt using profits, your net asset value goes up because of the whole liabilities versus assets idea that's on an accounting statement. So 
the uh, production guidance for the full year of 2019 remains unchanged at around 63,000 barrels of oil per day to 70,000 barrels of oil per day. Uh, their revenue has made a decent bump all the way to $858 million. And uh, in 2018, they had made revenue of something like 548 million pounds, uh, sorry, dollars. $548 million, we mustn't make that mistake. The EBITDA is up to $525 million in comparison to $311 million in the previous period. Better margins have been shown. Their operating expenditure costs have been reduced to $20 a barrel versus $22 odd a barrel in 2018. Uh, they've actually mentioned here reflecting the acquisition of additional interest in Magnus. So that was the asset that they raise money to buy more into and if i look at their net debt now as a result of free cash flow generation of 138 million dollars in comparison to 54 million dollars in the previous period that is 2018 enquist have been able to reduce their debt which is a beautiful thing to see in fact if i look into their financial information i can see they made a profit before tax of around 200 $64 million in the first half of 2019. Really impressive stuff. And the net debt reduction, I believe, in comparison to the end of 2018, to the end of June, had been something like $140 million. So they are reducing that debt by a huge figure. Goodness me, I'm very, very impressed by this. But the only issue is the realized oil price was $66.1 per barrel. So if we compare these guys to Premier Oil, these guys have less hedging available. So if oil price were to crash, they were to likely take a bigger hit if we're talking about their share price action. But um, I see that they are also utilizing some UK corporate tax losses. They've decreased to something like 3.5. 1 billion dollars in comparison 3.2 back in 2018 if i look at the accounts there's not really anything special i can get but 140 million in net debt reduction is really impressive to say the least for a company that was once in a position of which they were at risk of liquidation once again i must disclose that i don't hold shares in this company whether a position being long or a position being short but the market cap has them priced quite cheaply in fact a market cap of 313 million pounds giving them an implied p ratio of around two wow that is really impressive to say the least it might even be less than two i can only assume that the company shares should rally on the back of this if they don't there's something seriously wrong with the market pricing i do understand that they have 1.6 billion dollars in debt so let's talk about like 1.3 million pounds, 1.4 million, just to be safer. That does have a lot of risk to the company, but as they reduce debt, their leverage ratio decreases, or like EBITDA to leverage or whatever. That ratio that a lot of people value in industry decreases. And as it gets below a certain level, for example, Premier was trying to do something like below 2x leverage. As they get lower, they will be investable and you get pension funds pouring money in because their standards are met. I could talk about Future Group. Future Group's rallied quite a bit. This company, in fact, has a leverage ratio of one times or something, which is really investable by industry standards. Having a look at Enquist's shares, though, we can see that they've made a 52-week high at 37.58 pence per share. And a 52 week low at 15.24. 15.24 was achieved on the, I believe, news of the rights issue. And they had an issue with fundraising, but that was all sorted in the end. And when oil prices were around $80 a barrel, the price of an Enquist share was around 37 pence. So Enquist and oil are strongly correlated, but Enquist also have an interesting correlation to their benchmark index which I believe is the FTSE 350 or the 250 when I back tested it I was able to see this but uh, they don't actually have the highest beta if we're talking about movements relative to an index 
The highest beta, as I mentioned before, was Premier. I could see Premier and Enquist having the two highest betas and interchanging at times. You could have Enquist doing more than Premier does or Premier doing more than Enquist, but you don't really see other companies like Tullo, uh, Janelle, GKP, and Cairn doing the same kind of performance on the back of bullish oil movement. We could see yesterday, oil was up something like 4%. Premier had been up around 5.5%. The issue is Enquist sometimes has an inverse correlation. And we can see that today, they actually, or not today, actually, yesterday, on the 4th of September, which was uh, Wednesday, we can see that their shares went up to something like 19 pence from a start price of 18.5, but then closed at 18.5. So maybe there was a sell off ahead of today's results. I'm surprised though. I think uh, this is something I'm gonna look into myself in fact, because there is quite a bit of value in it. And finally, moving on to Dixon's Carphone PLC. This company has released a trading update for the 13 weeks ended the 27th of July 2019. So they have shown international revenue has increased by something like 4%, but more specifically 4% in the Nordics and 7% in Greece. The only issue is that UK and Ireland mobile like for like revenue is down 10%. And they've mentioned in fact that uh, they are in a challenging traditional postpay market and they are progressing on a business consolidation new customer proposition, which basically means that the company is going through a strategic restructuring to try and take back their share in the market that they once had. The only worrying thing is this industry is really difficult to make a decent profit in with regards to low margins. And in fact, seeing as their guidance for the year remains unchanged, I can only assume that this is a meh average report because if we look at their CEO statement, he said, Alex Baldock has actually said, we're on track with both our trading this year and our longer term transformation. But they've also mentioned that the current political climate is volatile. They just hope that there is no material disruption and they will stand by their full year guidance, which is a little worrying because when I look at what's happened with a UK and Ireland mobile revenue, this isn't really growth at all and there hasn't been much of an impact from Brexit but they haven't blamed Brexit so at least they're accepting their mistakes here over at Dixon's Carphone. We haven't seen any numbers mentioned in this piece of news but they mentioned that they are going to publish their interim results on Thursday the 12th of December 2019. So if we look at the company's shares, Dixon Carphone, PLC, otherwise known as the ticker symbol DC dot, listed on the London Stock Exchange, otherwise known as LON. Uh, we can see that their market cap at the moment is at 1.32 billion pounds. Their 52 week high stands at around 180 pence per share and their 52 week low stands at around 100 pence per share. So that's quite a steep fall. In fact, the company shares have been in a downtrend since that. 2nd of November 2018 high point you've seen highs made well recent highs made at around 150 pence per share and then 121 and now 114 so shares are struggling to break highs and usually with these kind of chart setups you look for them to break that major resistance point before the trend is being reversed or at least draw a trend line from the highs that have been made, the lower highs being set up, and then connect the lower lows to see where your levels could be at. But uh, I don't really see anything positive for this company. They did rally into today's results by about 8%, but it's likely that this was linked to the index rallies and a lot of confidence supposedly being put on a Brexit deal being sorted. Well, that's obviously gone sideways. I haven't even been following it to know that there haven't been any major advancements, but it doesn't matter. We wish all the best to all investors. And if you're looking at Dixon's car phone, remember the 12th of December, 2019, that is a Thursday. And that is when they're going to release their interim results.
So we'll be looking forward to seeing whether they can actually make a decent amount of profit or will it be loss making territory once again. Nevertheless, I've been your host Ryan Kier and I will leave on that note and get ready for another day of college. So that's it from me, until next time.